What's up, Tortoise Townies? It's Dan, the Tortoise Man, with TortoiseTown.com, your home for captive bred reptiles, as well as reptile accessories. And today, we're gonna to be talking about our very special friend, one of our yearling, ornate box turtles. The ornate box turtle is one of my personal favorite box turtles out there because of their beautiful shells. They have nice dark colored shells, which I find particularly awesome in a box turtle, but they also have one of my favorite striations, one of my favorite colorations, just these yellow patterns that go all the way across each scoot to give them a very unique and amazing color pattern. So let's talk a little bit about our box turtle friends. These guys are going to get their box name from the ability to close their shell on either end, their front end as well as their back end, using hinges that you can find on the bottom of their shell. These hinges are going to allow them to shut up tight as well as to keep them protected from any type of threat that might want to get inside of that home of theirs. The typical lifespan of an ornate box turtle is going to be about 40 to 60 years in captivity, but they have recorded instances of these guys living up to 100 years, so these guys are definitely a lifelong friend. In their long life, you can expect your box turtle to be reaching sizes of about 5 to 7 inches in length, maxing out at typically about 6 inches in length. So over their long life, and about four years into that life, they're going to reach that max size of about six inches in length. The ornate box turtle we have with us today, as I said, is one of our yearling ornate box turtles. These guys are going to be ready for one of our tortoise houses. In the well start phase, as well as in the hatching phase, these guys are not going to be quite ready for a tortoise house. It's gonna be a little bit too overwhelming for them. We have a video set up for one of our three-toed box turtle hatchlings. That's the type of setup that we're going to be needing for one of those hatchlings or well starts as the video describes. So if you wanna pop over and check that video out, if you're in the market for a well started a hatchling, one of the smaller box turtles, you wanna check out that video first and then check out this video to see what we're gonna be doing as far as these yearlings are concerned. Here at tortoisetown.com, we sell what we call a tortoise house deluxe kit. All everything that you're gonna be seeing in front of you is gonna be coming to one of those Tortoise House Deluxe kits. So we're gonna go over each individual item, tell you how to use that item and why that item is so important to include inside of one of these starter kits. So let's talk a little bit about heating and lighting requirements for your ornate box turtle. These guys are going to love an ambient temperature of about 70 to 75 degrees, which lines up really well with household temperatures. In addition to the ambient temperature of about 70 to 75 degrees, they're also gonna need a basking spot. Basking spots can be easily made using one of our dome light fixtures as well as our ceramic heat emitter. This is going to allow you to take the heat emitted from the ceramic heat emitter to localize it into a specific area of your tortoise house using this dome light reflector. This will take it, localize it to a certain area where it will be specifically located on top of. That way they'll have one portion of their tortoise house that's going to be dedicated to 90 to 95 degree basking while the rest of their terrarium is going to be set up to ensure that they have that 70 to 75 degree range for them to pick from. During the daytime, this ceramic heat emitter is going to be simulating the heat of the sun, but also we have over here to add into it to cover the other 50% of the sun's power is going to be the heat as well as the rays. The rays are going to be the radiation coming off, specifically UVBs. That's going to be absolutely important for your tortoise's life. So ensuring that you have this UVB hood lamp is going to be really, really great. And the reason that we're going for a UVB hood lamp is as opposed to using one of these dome reflectors to localize the heat to one area, we want these UVs going all the way across the open area. So ensuring that you have a hood is going to allow you to project the array of UVs into a very deep projection. So it's going to be really, really great for ensuring that no matter where they are, whether they're in the basking area or whether they're in one of our cooler areas, about 70, 75 degrees, they're still going to be getting those UVB rays. Humidity is going to be a huge part of your box turtle's life. So ensuring that your box turtle has our three main sources of humidity inside of their tortoise house at all times is going to be very important. Over here, we have one of our bags of forest floor coming along with our tortoise house deluxe kit. Also in Tortoise House Deluxe Kit, we have some of our terrarium moss. Terrarium moss is also super important, and it's going to give a little bit of a green effect to your terrarium, so making sure that you have a little bit of color aesthetics inside of it is going to be good for you, and the effectiveness of the moss is going to be good for them. Over here we have one of our Reptifoggers, which by all means is going to be the star of the humidity show. They are going to be creating a nice fog effect inside of your tortoise house to ensure that they're going to be getting insane amounts of humidity while it's on. These two over here, aforementioned, the forest floor is a cypress mulch mix. So this is going to allow them to burrow into, but it's also going to be made of an organic material. So it's going to have 
a nice ability to hold moisture in. So for the case where our ceramic heat emitter is going to be causing some condensation, it's going to be evaporating the moisture inside of the forest floor below it, that will add to the humidity. Also, the terrarium moss is gonna go along the backside of your tortoise house all the way across the end. This is a bit of a sponge effect where you put it in the water and then it soaks up all of that nice moisture. You line that up all around the back of your tortoise house and that's going to create almost like an above ground pool for your tortoise. So these guys are going to be able to walk right through that brush, really wiggle inside of there and then get that type of coverage of moisture all the way across the backs of their shell. So as opposed to diving themselves head first inside of water, they can kind of get that type of humidity that they're looking for just by having that type of moss around their environment. Water is going to be super important for your box turtle as you might have seen in our hatchling box turtle video. Uh, these guys are going to be going for one of our Reptor ramps. Reptor ramps are great because to get into the Reptor ramp, they have a ramp, and to get out of the Reptor ramp, they have a ramp. So making sure that your tortoise isn't gonna get stuck in there is going to be important. Um, that's why we're gonna go for one of these Reptor ramps. Reptor ramps are great to fill with water, but making sure that water is going to be distilled water or spring water is going to be absolutely ideal. And tap water is never going to be okay for them, so don't even try it. Um, but we'll also want to make sure that that water is available at all times and not only available but also clean. Often they'll go into the water to relieve themselves so if you ever see anything floating around in there or you ever see any bit of this, uh, this forest floor stuck inside their water bowl, go ahead and give it a change, give it a wipe out and then put it back in there with some fresh water. They will surely love it. And if I could direct your attention over here to the next item, it's going to be one of our half logs. Half logs are absolutely amazing because they are a hide effect. If you want to check it out, they have a hole right down the center so when I put our box turtle over here they can climb right underneath that get that protection that they're looking for when they're not trying to be the star of the show so these are going to be really really important to make sure that they feel safe and secure but what's also going to do is allow us to create what we're going to call a heat hide using the ceramic heat emitter and dome picture that we talked about earlier to create a basking spot and locating that basking spot directly over top of your hide will allow, that, allow them to be able to get closer to the heat if they want to climb up on top of the hide but also if they're feeling a little bit shy, a little bit shut in and they want that privacy, they can climb on underneath of it like he is right now. And then the heat coming from that localized area will still encompass underneath of it too. So they'll have a nice place where they can get that, that life-saving regulation of temperature, that 90 degree, 95 degree basking area where they're going to be regulating their digestive system, where they're going to be fighting any type of infection that they have inside of that, that heat area, but they can also climb underneath of it. So last but certainly not least, we have some food requirements because these guys are gonna love to eat. These guys are feeding on a healthy diet of worms, on a healthy diet of crickets for their proteins. These guys are going to be getting tortoise chow that we have over here that we'll talk about in a second. They love their mustard greens, collard greens, dandelions, absolutely eating like champs. Um, they're also going to be needing some berries to help um, you know, kind of balance out their diet. So feeding them can be very, very fun as they have a very, very wide array of diets that they can eat. Most particularly, the one that we find is going to keep them most healthy, is going to be giving them everything that they need in tandem with their collard greens, um, is going to be some of our tortoise chow. Tortoise chow when mushed up looks sort of like this. So you can take this mush and you can spread it across your dandelions, you can spread it across your collard greens, and that'll create an awesome effect for them. But what it'll also do is allow it to bite down onto these, um, these pellets. So they come in really, really tough and not hydrated at all. So you can't break them if you tried. These little guys are gonna have a hard time breaking them with their beaks too. So what we'll do is hydrate them a little bit, soak them in some water, get them nice and mushy just like this. So you can just break them apart, spread that mush right over top of your leaves like an open face sandwich. Then take your carrots, your yellow squash, everything like that. You can sprinkle that right on top make it a little bit of fixings. And then on top of that, on top of all of that nice open face sandwich, we can actually take some of our Reptical. Reptical is a calcium supplement that is going to give them everything that they need that they're not gonna be getting inside of their diet. You can put this on two times a week. So a light sprinkling, a light dusting on top of their food or about 20 minutes before you feed them their crickets, you can give the crickets a nice little uh, bath inside of this um, Reptical and it'll be really great for them. The Reptical is gonna go hand in hand with our UVB hood lamp. The hood lamp, the UVBs from here, is going to allow them to process that calcium. So if this isn't right, this is not gonna do anything for you. So making sure that these two together are, are, are going to be working together is going to be really important. So if you see them acting any type of sluggish, if you see them um, you know, having maybe a soft shell, they're developing 
different symptoms of things like metabolic bones disease, you want to check your three big things. It's going to be your UVB hood lamp, your heat emitter, as well as your Reptical. These are all going to be three big factors in making sure that they stay healthy and safe and have a really great time developing into their adulthood. Thank you guys so much for watching our informational video about our ornate box turtle friends. If you guys liked the video or if you learned anything, please hit that like button. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell icon to stay updated on everything tortoisetown.com. I'm Dan the Man, and this is one of our yearling ornate box turtles. And this is us signing out. Until next time, we'll catch you guys at tortoisetown.com.